By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Musaleen. اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاه والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه يا حبيب الله الصلاه والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى اله وصحبه يا نور الله viewers of my channel welcome to arise and shine inshallah as we go and today again we have a unique topic and we're going to talk about a unique person inshallah as we go but before we begin we're going to give you a blessing of reciting through the park upon the prophet of allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam the prophet of allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam reported to say that whoever recites salat upon the prophet of allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam just one time just one time Allah Azza wa Jalla and his blessed angels will send mercy upon him 70 times. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Mercy upon you 70 times for just one Durood Park. Allahu Akbar. Viewers of the channel, please, I request you every day. I humbly request you to please make a habit of reciting Durood Park. The blessings are there, the countless countless blessings for reciting Durood Park. And like I've said before, who knows that one extra Durood Park that we recite today might make all the difference on the day of judgment. So please make a habit of reciting through the park users of the channel as you know when you're watching arise and shine after we give you the blessing of reciting through the park we have the privilege to be able to listen to some verses of the holy quran sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim main allah ta'ala ki panah mein aata hu shaitan e mardood se Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Allah ke naam se shuru jo nihayat meherban rehm wala Inna tawbatu ala Allah lil ladina ya'maluna as-su'a bi jahalatin thumma yatubuna min qareeb fa ulaika yatubu Allah وہ توبہ جس کا قبول کرنا اللہ نے اپنے فضل سے لازم کر لیا ہے وہ اڑی کی ہے جو نادانی سے برائی کر بیٹھے پھر تھوڑی دیر میں توبہ کر لیں ایسوں پر اللہ اپنی رحمت سے رجوع کرتا ہے اور اللہ علم و حکمت والا ہے اور وہ توبہ ان کی نہیں جو گناہوں میں لگے رہتے ہیں یہاں تک کہ جب ان میں کسی کو موت آئے تو کہے اب میں نے توبہ کی اور نہ ان کی جو کافر مرے ان کے لیے ہم نے دردناک عذاب تیار کر رکھا ہے ایمان والو تمہیں حلال نہیں کہ عورتوں کے وارث بن جاؤ زبردستی ولا اور عورتوں کو روکو نہیں اس دیت سے کہ جو مہر ان کو دیا تھا اس میں سے کچھ لے لو مگر اس صورت میں کہ سریح بے حیائی کا کام کریں فَإِن كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَيَجَعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا اور ان سے اچھا برتاؤ کرو پھر اگر وہ تمہیں پسند نہ آئیں تو قریب ہے کہ کوئی چیز تمہیں نہ پسند ہو اور اللہ اس میں بہت بھلائی رکھے وَإِن أَرَدْتُمُ اسْتِبْدَالَ زَوْجٍ مَكَانَ زَوْجٍ 
اور اگر تم ایک بی بی کے بدلے دوسری بدلنا چاہو اور اسے ڈھیرو مال دے چکے ہو تو اس میں سے کچھ واپس نہ لو کیا اسے واپس لو گے جھوٹ باندھ کر اور کھلے گنا سے اور کیوں کر اسے واپس لو گے حالانکہ تم میں ایک دوسرے کے سامنے بے پردہ ہو لیا اور وہ تم سے گاڑا عہد لے چکی ولا اور باپ دادا کی منکوحا سے نکاح نہ کرو مگر جو ہو گزرا وہ بے شک بے حیائی اور غزب کا کام ہے اور بہت بری راہ صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم Viewers of Mili Channel, we just have the privilege there to listen to some verses of the Holy Quran. And again, we've said this every day and we're going to continue to say it. If only as a family we can sit down, three verses a day, with translation, with commentary, and understand, understand what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from us. This code book for our life, the Holy Quran is there in front of us. If only we read it, utilize it, and understand it, and act upon it, inshaAllah Azza wa Jal. Viewers of Mili Channel, on today's program of Rise and Shine, we're going to talk about a unique personality, a unique person. And as we know, viewers of Mili Channel, children, our children are a blessing for us. They're a countless blessings of us. But our children can also become, you know, a problem for us if we do not give them the right tarbiyat. And today we're going to talk about a unique person, a unique child, a unique son, a unique person who, through his tarbiyat, we saw how he acted in his life. And we not know that we're talking about the one and only Sayyidina Ismail, alayhi salatu wasalam, the son of Sayyidina Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, inshaAllah. So we're going to talk about him today. How about his life, how about his sacrifices, how about his patience upon the command of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And hopefully we're going to learn something from it as well. But before we go on to the topic, inshaAllah Azza wa Jalla, we're going to listen to the kalam of the day. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. جب سے قدم پڑے ہیں رسالت ماب کے جنت بنا ہوا ہے مدینہ حضور کا پھر جا رہے ہیں اہل محبت کے قافلے پھر یاد آ رہا ہے مدینہ حضور کا آئی پھر یاد دربار میں 
जाने के लिए बहुत दूर गुलजार नबी से काशाए बुलावा मुझे दरबार नबी से ऐसा तैबा दुआ मुझको भी बुला मिले दरबार नबी से मदीना फुरकते पैबा कल बेमुज महिल जाता काश गुम्बदे खजरा देखने को मिल जाता फुरकते मदीना वो दिए मुझे सदमे को हो पर अगर पढ़ते को हो भी तो हिल जाता मदीना मदीना याद आया है मदीना याद आया है मदीना याद आया है फिराके मदीना में दिल हम जदा है जिगर टुकड़े टुकड़े हुआ जा रहा है रहू बस इसी गम में बेचैन सरवर मुकादर ने जो दाग फुरकत दिया है मेरे दिल के अरमा रहे दिल ही दिल में यही गम मेरे दिल को तड़पा रहा है या मल्ला मेरा हंगी तो देखो मैं पड़ा हूँ दूर तैबा से गे मेरा हम देखो मैं पड़ा हूँ दूर तैबा से सूस पाएगा बस मेरा दीदे मुझ तर्ज मदीने में मदीना जो यू मदीने जाता तो कुछ और बात होती कभी लौट कर न आता तो कुछ और बात होती मैं मदीने तो गया
ये बड़ा शर्फ था लेकिन वही दम जो टूट जाता तो कुछ और बात होती मदीना याद आया है मदीना याद आया है बड़ी उम्मीद है सरकार कदम करम की जब नजर होगी मदीने हम भी जाएंगे अगर जाना मदीने मकीने गुंबदे खजरा को हाले दिल सुनाएंगे गर खुशी चाहिए तो मदीने चलो जिंदगी चाहिए तो मदीने चलो सारी मसी मदीने की गलियों में है सारी मसी मदीने की गलियों में गए कैफ सारे का सारा मदीने में है दिल पे सद के किया तस्कील पाए तो पाए कहारू तस्कील पाए तो पाए कहा किस तरह दूर रह कर जिए हम यहाँ किस तरह दूर रह कर जिए हम यहाँ जब एक सब कुछ हमारा मदीने में है मदीना याद आया है मदीना याद आया है यार सोल कर देख I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Viewers of the channel, today we're talking about another prophet of Allah Azza wa Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam. And he is the son of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salatu wa salam. And it is said that on the eighth night of Zulhaj, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salatu wa salam dreamt that someone said to him, Indeed, Allah Azza has ordered you to slaughter your son. And from dawn to dusk, so he had this dream that someone has ordered him to slaughter his son. And from dawn to dusk, he continued to contemplate whether the dream was from Allah Azza 
of the dream was from shaitan. And this is the reason why the 8th of Zul Hajj was named the day of contemplation. On the night, on the ninth night of Zul Hajj, he had the same dream. And he was convinced now that this dream was from Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is why the ninth of Zul Hajj is referred to as the day of recognition. After he had the same dream once again on the 10th of Zul Hajj, he made a firm intention of sacrificing his son. And this is why the 10th day of Zul Hajj is known as the day of slaughter. The blessed status of the Prophet of Allah Azza wa Jal is such that they overcame so much difficulty, so much patience, and they overcame all of these difficulties to spread the deen of Islam, to call people to the path of righteousness. They were constantly had struggled through their life, and none of the prophets had an easy life. They all struggled and strived, but they continued on the mission, which was obviously to propagate the deen of Islam, to call people to the path of righteousness. And Sayyidina Ibrahim wasalam, is no different, that he was also tested, and he was tested in this time that now he was told by Allah Azza wa to sacrifice his only son. And when Sayyidina Ibrahim wasalam, realized that Allah Azza wa was commanding him to slaughter his son, he got immediately ready to sacrifice his son upon the divine command and he related the whole story to his son. When he related the whole story to his son, he said to him, now tell me what is your opinion? He asked his son, what is your opinion? Now with regards to this, it stated in Tafsir al-Khazan, the Prophet of Allah Sayyidina Ibrahim wasalam, was not asking his opinion. He was not asking his opinion. He was actually get, seeing his decision was acceptable by him. He was actually testing his own son as well. And he was also testing him and he was trying to test what his feelings were about this trial. And he also, to, he also wanted to know about the patience and the steadfastness of Sayyidina Ismail wasalam. And in this trial, he's obedience to the command of Allah Azza so that he could succeed in attaining the reward. And when Sayyidina Ibrahim wasalam, related this dream to his son, Allah Azza wa gives the reply in the Quran. The reply is recorded in the Quran in Surah Al Safat, Ayat 102. And Allah Azza wa says, and I give you the translation from Kamzul Imam. His son said to him, and it's related in the Quran, O my father, do what you are commanded to do. Allah Azza wa you will soon find me patiently enduring. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Just picture the scene that a father has had a dream to sacrifice his son. And on the first day he thinks about it, that is this a dream from Allah Azza wa or is this a command or is this from shaitan? And on the second day he has another dream as well and now he's convinced that yes, this is a command from Allah Azza wa And on the third day when he has it again, he now is made a firm decision to slaughter his beloved son. Think about the feelings that he was going through then. Think about the feelings that he was going through, because remember this views of Mili Channel. When we talk about our pious predecessors, when we talk about the prophets, at the end of the day, they were human beings. They had feelings. They had love. They had families. They had wants. They had needs. But they put all of that to one side and sacrificed themselves for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla and showed patience and steadfastness in this. So it stated, with regards to this incident, that in, Say in Tafsir al-Kazam, that Sayyidina Ismail wasalam, humbly said to his father, Dear father, tie me tightly with ropes before you slaughter me, so that lest I not move, lest my reward should get reduced. So he said to his father, tighten me up, because at that critical moment, if I move about or struggle, I don't want my reward to be reduced. Allahu Akbar. Also, please protect your clothes from my splashes of my blood because my mother will get grieved if she sees it. Allahu Akbar. Sharpen the knife so that it runs properly over my throat. I, my throat gets cut immediately because death is extremely painful. He knows all these things. Again, he's a human being. He knows that death is painful. Make me lie on my front, placing my forehead over the ground so that you cannot see my face while slaughtering me. And when you go to my mother, please convey my salam to her. And if you consider it appropriate, so please give my kameez, I long loose and flu sleeve shirt that he had on him, and this will comfort her and help her and have patience. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. His blessed father said, oh my son, how helpful you are in carrying out the order of Allah Azza wa Therefore, Sayyidina Ibrahim wasalam, tied his son as suggested by him, made him lie on his front with his forehead placed over the ground, sharpened his knife, averted his eyes from his face and ran the knife over his throat. 
but the knife did not cut. I.e., his throat was not slit. When Sayyidina Ibrahim made his son lie on the ground for slaughtering, Sayyidina Jibreel came over with a ram from paradise as a fidya by the command of Allah and loudly said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Having heard this voice, Sayyidina Ibrahim raised his eyes toward the sky and realized that the time of the trial from Allah had been over and that had a ram had been sent al fidya in the place of his son. And he therefore said delightedly, La ilaha illallahu wallahu akbar. When Sayyidina Ismail al -Islam heard this, he said, Allahu akbar walillahi alhamd. Allahu akbar. Since then, viewers of Munich, Allah, Allah, Allah. Since then, viewers of Munich, this sunnah of reciting these blessed words by these three blessed personalities has been going on and will continue until the day of judgment. Allahu akbar. Allahu akbar. La ilaha illallah wa Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. Allah. Allahu Akbar. You know, when there are many messages and blessings there for us, that, you know, Allah Azza wa Jal tests us, and the greatest reward for us in Mother Channel is on the greatest trial. And that's why the pious scholars have said to us that, you know, Fasting during the month of Ramadan when it is hot, when there are long days, there are greater reward for that. And here in the UK, we have the extremes. We have the long days during the summer and we have the short days during the winter. And we have days during the summer where we have 21 hour, maybe even close to 22 hour fast. And yet during the winter, we have the 10 hour, 12 hour maximum fast as well. And so it is a blessing that if Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, you meet you in the month of Ramadan in the hot days. And you know, those people that, you know, I've had the opportunity to go to Pakistan and fast over there. And even though the fasts are shorter over there, I feel that they're a lot harder over there. I find them, to be honest, I find them quite hard over there. But again, if you have this mindset that the harder the fast is, the greater the reward is, then inshallah, as well, you're given patience. And we need to learn this, that whatever the test is, whatever the trial is, whatever the problem we face in this dunya, it is there as a reward for us as well. And I, have, I said this before that I remember once reading that someone said that I asked Allah as well, for strength and he gave me problems to solve. And at the end he wrote, when he asked, the, 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 the writing goes on, continues that I asked for this and I was given this, I was asked for this and I was given this. But the one that I remember was that I asked Allah Azza wa for strength and he gave me problems to solve. And at the end he says that, you know, I got nothing what I asked, but I got everything that I needed. And these problems that we have faced, they are there to make us stronger. They are there as a test. They are there to reward us. So whenever a test comes to us, whenever a problem comes to us, then at that time, we should think to us that this is a, is nothing in comparison to the test that others are facing. And again, we should show patience at that time and do shukr in the court of Allah Azza wa And if we show patience at the times of calamity, at the times of problems, then inshallah Azza wa we will be rewarded. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala narrated that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, undoubtedly, more reward lies in a tough trial. When Allah Azza wa loves any nation, he makes them suffer a trial. So the one who's pleased with himself for him, there is a pleasure. And the one who is displeased for him, there is displeasure. So we should be thankful to Allah. And you know, if we have this mindset, that if we're honest with ourselves, have we really been tested? You know, the majority of the people that are watching this program now, you were born as a Muslim. When you were born, the azam was read into your ears. You were given a Muslim name. You were brought up in a Muslim family. You were sent to madrasa at a young age to learn the Quran, to learn the namaz. And as you grew a little bit older, you started fasting, etc., etc. So what sacrifices did we make to, end, to become Muslims? We made no sacrifices. And if we look at the people of the past, the sacrifices that they made, the struggles that they had, the problems that they faced, so that they could be in the fold of Islam, that they were, they were slaughtered, they were martyred because they said that we are Muslims. That they said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Because of them words, they were slaughtered. Because of them words, they were persecuted. And so if you think to yourself then, we've not really faced any persecution. We've not faced any trials. We've not faced any problems. 
Ya Allah, and, 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 and the mindset that we should have is that we should be fearful because if we've not faced any trials or tribulations in this dunya, then on the day of judgment, all of the blessings that we've had here, we're going to have to account for. All the sins that we have committed during this dunya, we're going to have to account for. Because these trials, these tribulations, the way that you show patience with them, the way that you do shukr in the court of Allah Azza wa Jalla, are a means for you to get your sins erased. And if we've not faced any of these trials, if we've not faced any of these tribulations, then we should be fearful. And then at the same time, when we have these trials, and we have these tribulations, and we face these problems, then we should be thankful to Allah Azza wa Jalla, and face them and think to them, Ya Allah, yes, I know this problem. You are the one that's given me this problem. You are the one that's given me this problem. And inshallah, so you, you will be the one that will ease this problem for me as well. You are the one that's created this lock for me. And you are the one that has the key for these locks as well. Allahu Akbar. If only we have that mindset and endure whatever problems we face. And whenever a command of Allah Azzawajal is there, whenever there is a command of Allah Azzawajal, we should never ever think of it as difficult. Reading that namaz five times a day, we should never think that that is a difficult command to fulfill. We should never say to us, oh, you know what, it's so hard getting up at Fajr. Allah, but it is a blessing that you get up at Fajr. Yeah? There's people that go to sleep and never wake up, and that's the last time. It is you should do shukr in the court of Allah, as well, that you've woken up, you're alive. There are people that even if they wanted to, they could not get out of the bed because of the illnesses that they faced. There are people that could not stand up because of the problems that they faced, the physical problems that they faced. You are blessed. When your alarm clock goes off for Fajr, you should do shukr in the court of Allah, that Ya Allah, you give me the opportunity to one, listen to the alarm, two, to be able to put the hand and switch off the alarm, three, to be able to lift the blanket, four, to be able to get out of the bed, five, to be able to I can carry on and carry on and carry on. And when we heard Allah Azza wa Jalla says, which of the blessings of your Lord do you deny? We have so many blessings, so many blessings that we have. And we are so fortunate that Allah Azza wa Jalla blesses us with these. So whenever we face a trial, whenever we say face a tribulation, whenever we face a problem, we should be thankful. We should be thankful that this has come to us. And we should show patience at that time. And if we look at the past, if we look at the lesson from this Hajj, if we look at the lesson of Hajj, what is it? It's sacrifice. Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. And today we are fortunate. Then what do we do? We sacrifice an animal. If Allah Azza wa Jalla told us to sacrifice our son, then what would happen? And then when Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us to sacrifice an animal, even then we find it hard. We find it hard to sacrifice an animal. And what we'll do is we'll go around, we'll search on social media, where's the cheapest qurbani? Oh, they're doing it there for 30 quid. Oh, they're doing it there for 20 quid. Oh, they're doing it, there. I can get it done cheaper there. And we look for the cheapest one. Allahu Akbar. Once a year, Allah Azza wa Jalla orders us to sacrifice an animal in the way of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Once a year, we are told to sacrifice an animal in remembrance of that. And that remembrance should not be that it should just that we sacrifice the animal, but we should think and reflect at the sacrifices that were made that day. Why? Because of the command of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah Azza wa Jalla ordered him to do it. And he was willing to come fulfill the command of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah Azza wa Jalla orders us to read our namaz five times a day. We don't do it. Allah Azza wa Jalla orders us to pay our zakat, we don't do it. Allah Azza wa Jalla orders us to fast during the month of Ramadan, we don't do it. Allah Azza wa Jalla orders us to perform the hajj if we are physically and financially capable, we don't do it. And then we wonder. We wonder why we are facing all of these problems and all these calamities. Nations of the past were destroyed. Views of Madhichan, nations of the past were destroyed because they did not, they did not fulfill the commands of Allah Azza wa Jalla. It is a mercy upon Allah Azza wa Jalla that if we do not read our namaz, that Allah Azza wa Jalla does not bury us in the ground that we are standing. It is a mercy upon Allah Azza wa Jalla. And yet we still. So these, these stories of the past, they're not just stories. They are one, our rich heritage. They are there for us to learn lessons from. And the lesson that we should learn from this story that I mentioned to you today is that whatever is the command of Allah Azza wa Jalla, we should fulfill that command with patience and happily fulfill it. That this is the command, I will do it. Labbaik. It is a command to pay the zakat, I'll do it, no problem. Allah Azza wa Jal give me that wealth. It is a command to read my namaz, I will do it. Allah Azza wa Jal give me the health to do it. 
I will fast during the month of Ramadan, inshallah, I have the health and the strength and I will do it. And as soon as Allah fulfills me with the financial needs, inshallah, I will perform the Hajj. And all the other things, we should refrain from those sins and perform those commands and show patience and do shukr in the court of Allah Azzawajal. That Allah Azzawajal is not testing us to the way that other people of the past was. Now the test that we mentioned earlier on, that was an extreme test. That was an extreme test. But even today, viewers of Madhid Channel, people that come to the fold of Islam, people that accept Islam, people that leave the former religion and revert back to the fold of Islam, they face trials and tribulations. They face problems. I know today that people, that when they've come back to Islam, they've had the bank accounts frozen, they've been kicked out of the houses with only the clothes that they're wearing. They have nothing. They have nothing. But they are stronger in the fame of Islam. Why? Because they've had to sacrifice to come to Islam. And I remember seeing meeting people, meeting new Muslims, people that have come back to Islam, they come back to Islam today. One month later, they're fasting during the month of Ramadan. Three months later, they're going and performing the Hajj. They read the Kalma three months ago and they're going and performing the Hajj. We were born into Muslim families. We are 30, 40, 50, 60 years old and we still not perform the Hajj, even though it is further upon us. Because we do not understand the significance of it. Because if we think about it, Islam was given us to us freely. We hadn't, we made no sacrifices for it. And when you've not made any sacrifices for it, you take things for granted. We are so fortunate, views of Malaysia, that Allah Azza wa has blessed us with Iman, blessed us with the faith of Islam, blessed us we be born in a Muslim household, but we take it for granted. And I mentioned this story, and I'll quickly mention this story now before we go to the reminder of the day. There was an individual I know that he had become a Muslim. He, was, he wasn't a Muslim before, he became a Muslim. And he was, uh, I can't remember what he, but he used to work from home. He used to work from home and he lived in, in an area where there were not many, not many Muslims. So there was only maybe a small masjid Then he used to go and praise the Mazda. And a short time after him becoming a Muslim, maybe a couple of months later, I met him. And he asked me a question, but he also insisted on the answer. That was the weird thing. He said to me, brother, I'm going to ask you a question. But the answer should be, no, this is not true. And I said, well, if you're asking the question, you already know the answer. Why are you asking me? Said, no, no, I just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. I said, okay, fair enough. He said, I have heard. I have heard. I don't believe it, he said. I don't believe this, but I've heard it. So I just want to make sure. I said, okay, okay. I have heard that there are Muslims who don't read the namaz. Tell me that's not true. What could I say to him? You know, when he, when he asked that question, I like put my head down a little bit. And he realized, he realized that I didn't, I wasn't going to give him the answer. He thought that instant, no, 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 no. Everybody reads the namaz. Who told you that? But I couldn't say that to him. And as soon as I put my head down, he realized that these whispers that he'd heard, these stories that he heard, they were true. And his reaction, he was shocked. He was shocked to hear that there are Muslims out there who do not read the namaz. How can, you, how can you be a Muslim, he said, and not read your namaz? Again, no answer from me. I can't answer that. How is it possible, he said, that people say they are Muslims, they, they look like Muslims, they dress like Muslims, and they don't read the namaz. How is that possible? I've still been looking for the answer so many years later. Views of the channel, these sacrifices that Allah Azza wa Jal, they're not sacrifices. They are blessings from Allah Azza wa Jal. And if we develop this mindset that whatever Allah Azza wa Jal instructs us to do, commands us to do, whatever the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us to do, it is for our betterment that we will benefit from this, that we will improve ourselves from this. It is better for our dunya, it is better for our akhirat, it is better for our grave, if only we realize. This dunya is like a game, it's a pastime. And I remember someone once saying that, you know, this, this dunya, when you're in this dunya and you, you watch a game, you watch a sport and your emotions are up and down and you're angry and you're sad as your players are doing well and everything happens. And then as the final whistle's blown at the end of the game, or the, the minutes are over or the last week it goes or whatever it is, you take a deep breath and you go back to your normal world. This dunya is like this. This dunya is like this, that we have our emotions up and down. But our true destination will come when we breathe our last, when we take our deep last breath. Then we will realize 
what our true destination is. And then we will regret every moment that we wasted in this dunya. We'll regret all them things, but then it'll be too late. Then you will not have the time to perform one sajda. Then you fortunate are those people that on their lips is the kalma when they pass away. Fortunate are those people views the Madhi channel. Will we get the opportunity? Will I get the opportunity? I don't know. Nobody knows. So whilst I have the opportunity, whilst I am healthy, whilst I am strong, I should do the zikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. I should read the Quran, I should fulfill them commands. If only views of the channel. Sorry once again views of the channel, I've digressed from the topic, please forgive me again. But inshallah Azza wa Jal, we're now going to go to the daily reminder, the reminder of the day, and hopefully we're going to learn something new again. Inshallah Azza wa Jal. Let's go to the daily reminder. Sallu alil Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madani channel, welcome back to our daily reminder. And today, inshallah, Azawajal, I've taken a daily reminder from this very beautiful words of the glorious Quran. Allah Azawajal, He mentions in the Quran, وَلَا تَنِيَا فِي ذِكْرِي And do not slacken in my remembrance. Yani, do not be slackened in the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned in many places about the remembrance of Himself. Allah Ta'ala also mentions that, oh believers, you remember me and I shall remember you as well. Now when we remember Allah Azza wa Jal, just imagine when Allah Ta'ala will remember us, such a high rank that person will be, that Allah Ta'ala will be remembering that person. Subhanallah, Allah Ta'ala will have mercy upon that person. Allah Ta'ala will shower his blessings upon that person when it means that Allah Azza wa will remember that person. And always remember to yourself, وَلَا تَنِيَا فِي ذِكْرِي And do not slacken in my remembrance. Always read this verse in the, in, of the Holy Quran. Inshallah Azza wa we will not be slackened off. What happens? Because we are humans, generally, you know, we start, we start to slack off. We'll do something good and then we'll slack off, we'll back off. And then what will happen is slowly the shaitan, he will whisper in our minds, in our hearts, and he will take us away from that ibadat of Allah Azza wa Jal. And as Muslims, we should be getting stronger and stronger. You know, someone asked a pious person that uh, how would a person be strong in the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal? And one of the things that the, the pious person, he said, he says that when your age is increasing, your piety should be increasing as well. Now remember, ask yourself, when was the last time that I remembered Allah Azza wa Jal just for the sake of Allah? Not because I'm going to get good deeds, not because I'm going to be granted paradise because of this, just for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Never ever slack enough because Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who has given us this power. Once a pious person, he was walking through a jungle and he was doing the zikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then the shaitan came to him and the shaitan whispered in his mind, Oh yeah, that you are remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. Do you get a reply from it? And he says, no, I don't. And he goes, so why are you remembering Allah Azza wa Jal when you are not getting a reply from him? So the shaitan worked on him. And what happened was he stopped the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he had another thought. He heard a voice from the unseen that, oh person, tell to the shaitan, say to the shaitan and ask yourself, who gave you this power to remember Allah Azza wa Jal? And the person, he said that Allah is the one who gave me power. So Allah Ta'ala is remembering you because you are remembering Him. Allah is giving you the power that you are remembering Him today as well. Let's all ask ourselves. Sometimes when we slack off, we'll be offering our salah and then Ma'azallah will start to slack off. We'll be reciting durood upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then we'll start to slack off as well. We'll be going to the masjid to offer our five times salah, then we slack a lot. This is the time that we get hold of our nafs, we get hold of our ego and we say to the nafs that no, I will worship Allah Azza wa I will remember Allah Azza wa Jal, inshallah Azza wa Jal. That will reignite the jazba, the enthusiasm and inshallah Azza wa Jal, we will be successful in remembering our Rabbi Azza wa Jal. Remember, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned inside the glorious Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا ليعبدون. And I have created the jinns and the humans for my worship. So Allah Azza wa Jal has created, we have created the jinns and humans for my worship. 
So we were created for the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. We were not created so that we can waste our time. We were not created that we spend our time in the markets. We were not created that we spend our times in football fields. We don't, we were not created that we can go out and ma'azallah waste our precious time. No, we were created to remember Allah Azza wa Jal. Every time, whenever this thought comes into your mind, always remember this verse of the Holy Quran. وَلَا تَنِيَا فِي ذِكْرِي And do not slacken in my remembrance. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, once we start to remember our Rabb Azza wa Jal again, and inshallah, Azza wa Jal, once we are more powerful, that we do not get slackened off from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal, we will be successful in this world and in the hereafter. And this is what this life is all about, to please your Rabb, to worship Allah Azza wa Jal in such a manner that our ibadah, our, our, our worship is all accepted in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then whatever Allah Ta'ala has planned for the Muslims in the hereafter, inshallah Azza wa Jal, we can enjoy the better life of the hereafter. May Allah Azza wa give me and all of us the ability to remember him. Let me just mention to you last time, وَلَا تَنِيَا فِي ذِكْرِي And do not slacken in my remembrance. Ya Allah, we remember you. Ya Allah Azza wa Jal, we will never slacken off. Inshallah Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. MashaAllah, Hafiz Rafaq al-Tari. Telling us about the remembrance of Allah Azza wa to do the zikr of Allah Azza wa And if we become aware, if you have this feeling inside yourself that Allah Azza wa is watching you, that whatever you do, whatever you see, whatever you speak, wherever you go, Allah Azza wa is watching you, then have this feeling around you that Allah Azza wa is watching. And without doubt, Allah Azza wa is watching us. Allah Azza wa is aware of everything that we do. And if you have this mindset, then inshallah Azza wa that will help you to develop a mindset to perform good deeds and develop a mindset to refrain from committing sins. Here's another channel. Today we talked about, and we mentioned the story at the beginning, where Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam was willing to sacrifice his son. And his son was very patient his son showed that, yeah, said to his father that if it is the will of Allah Azza wa fulfill the command. And there is a great lesson there to be learned from us. That, you know, the upbringing of the child, how was the upbringing of that child? That when his father said to him, that's my son, Allah Azza wa has ordered me to sacrifice you. And his son did not waver. His son said to him that if it is the will of Allah Azza wa fulfill your command and you will find me patient. How did his son have that mindset? because of the upbringing of his child. We expect nowadays, viewers of Malaysia, not to do anything, to just give our children the best clothes, give our children the best shoes, give our children the best phones, and the best you know, PC tablets, or whatever they want. Give them anything, basically, give them money, and expect them to be pious. Give them money, and expect them that they read the namaz five times a day. Send them to the Imam Sahib, for the madrasa for two hours a day, one and a half hours a day, send him there, and expect that, think to yourself that my religious duty is fulfilled, that I fulfill my duty. I've, I found a good madrasa for him. I found a good kari for him. I found a good teacher for him. My job's done. And then, when that same child grows up and he's disobedient, he does not follow the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. When you grow old, he doesn't look after you and you think, what have I done wrong? The tarbiyat of our children views in the channel is very, very, very important. That from a young age, we need to think about how we're bringing up our children. And what happens is, is normally we think about these problems, we th well, we think about it too late. So many times I've had a phone call, brother, can you help us? My son, you know, he's into drugs, he's, uh, he's into gangs, he's been in jail. Can you go and visit, can you even go and visit him in jail and go and speak to him in jail? And we say, okay. And he's just something like 22, 24, 25. You worried about your son when he's 22, 24, 25. Why weren't you worried about him earlier on? I remember once we got a message through the sisters that some sister phoned up another sister. And she said to her that I'm really worried about my child. 
I'm really worried about my child because in the society today, all of these things are happen. I'm really worried that my child's going to get affected by it. I need some advice. Please help me. What can I do? This is happening around us. This is happening around us. I'm seeing that drug dealing is happening. I'm seeing gang fire warfare are happening. This is happening. This. What do I do? Please advise me. And the sister asked her a question. How old is your child? My child is two months old, was the reply. That's the time to start being worried. That's the time to start to think and reflect on the tarbiyat of your children. That is the time that we need to think and reflect on it as well. You know, there was someone, we went to, we met someone the other day and they said that my, my daughter is now five months old. As my daughter gets a little bit older, I've told everybody in the family that when my daughter gets older, stop using the mobile phone around her because then she'll just want the mobile phone all the time. So I don't want anybody using the mobile phone. If you want to use the mobile phone, go into another room and use it. If you want to go on social media, go in another time and use it. I don't want my daughter seeing this mobile phone being used. That be at a young age views of the channel. That is the time that we need to think and reflect. Because later on it becomes too late. And if we expect our children to follow in the footsteps of Sayyidina Ismail if we expect our children to follow in the footsteps of the grandchildren of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If we expect our children to be steadfast in the namaz, to follow the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then we can't wait for 18 years and then think, oh, so what should I do about it? It's too late for you, Samir Chalam. When it comes to the upbringing of your children right from day one, and again, I've said it so many times, I'm going to say it again, attach yourself to an environment. Attach yourself to the environment of Dawah and this will help you. This will empower you. This will provide you with the tools that you need to help you to bring up your children. This will provide you with an environment where your children can come and also enable them to protect their Iman. Not only enable them to protect their Iman, but also assist in protecting other people's Iman as well. For the brothers, for the sisters, there's activities that take place, but you need to come forward. You need to realize that it's your role, your responsibility to look after your children. You need to give them your time. Yes, I know in the modern day world, it is hard, it is difficult. And now, especially now, we're saying that, you know, a crisis is happening all around the world, that people are financially struggling. And so what happens is people are having to work extra hours and people are having to get double jobs and everything. And more and more time, they're spending earning money and less and less time with the family. But even then, viewers of Malishan, whatever time you have for the family, make sure it's quality time. Give your family quality time. Give your children quality time. When you're home, spend that time with your children. Sit with the children, play with the children, teach the children, tell the stories to the children. Teach them at a young age. Make them stand next to you when you're reading the namaz, even if they're only four, five, six, and they, they don't know the laws of Islam, they don't know how to read the namaz properly, but let them stand next to you. From a young age, when you're doing the one, make them raise their hands. Bitta, put your hands like this. Bitta, just get your hands and put them like this, we're gonna do the one now. They don't know, they're just doing it there because you're doing it. But that is the tarbiyat views of the channel. From a young age, we need to start doing this. Views of the channel again, sorry, once again, I digress from the topic. We're now going to go to the daily hadith and hopefully we're going to learn something new today. So inshallah, Azawajal, please stay tuned. Let's listen to the daily hadith and hopefully we'll learn something. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. It is mentioned in Tirmizi, our beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has said, أَكْمَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا وَخِيَارُكُمْ خِيَارُكُمْ لِنِسَائِهِمْ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The most complete in terms of faith are those who have the best character. And خِيَارُكُمْ the best among you are those who are the best with their women, meaning their wives. So for us, it's a lesson that if we want to be the best in terms of Iman, in terms of faith, then we have to adopt good character. Our character, our nature, our behavior should reflect the fact that we have adopted good character and learned from the prophetic way. And another reflection of being good or being among the best is that we are good with the women of our household or in this regard or in this respect our the wife so if a husband is bad to his wife or does not treat her well in any way or does not fulfill her right 
He cannot be from those who are considered the best among the people. There may be people who are apparently very religious. They have a religious outlook, religious appearance. They seem very good outside, but when they come home, they are completely different people. And it's a lesson for them especially, and for many others generally, men's, men must learn that true character or good character is seen or reflected outside of the home and within the home as well. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. MashaAllah, a beautiful Madri pearl there from Kamar Madri, one of our graduates from Jamaat al Madina. And I pray that we all, in every household, we have at least one person that becomes a scholar of the deen so that we can protect the household, inshallah. And as we were talking earlier about the of our children, bringing up with our children, if only we can give them the mindset, if we can give our children the mindset that from a young age, that inshallah, they'll become a scholar. And remember, there's a, a child I know, and right from a young age, you know, basically at the age of two, maybe 18 months, two in, you know, better what you're going to become, alim, alim. I'm going to become an alim. And he's from that young age, and even now, I've met him after maybe five or six years, he's maybe eight now. You ask him, what are you going to become better when you grow up? Alim. I'm going to become an alim. So he has this mindset that I want to become a scholar of the deen. And where does this come from, viewers of Malikshan? This has come from the upbringing of the family. But back to what we were talking about Sayyidina Ismail al And it stated that his father, Sayyidina Ibrahim al he brought him and his mother, Sayyidina Hajra radiallahu ta'ala, and to Makkah. And he left them there. And a long time passed, and the Juram tribe set up camp in Makkah there. And they also started living there. And during this time, Sayyidina Ismail Islam, he grew up and he became a young man, Alhamdulillah. And he also married one of the women belonging to that tribe. And his mother passed away during the period of this time. And after a long time, Sayyidina Ibrahim Islam came and visited him. But when he came and visited him, he wasn't there. And his wife and asked him to come into the house. She gave him a seat, sat him down. And he said to her, have you got anything to eat? And she presented him with meat and milk. And he asked her, because she did not know that this was her father-in-law. He asked her, how are you? Yeah. And she said, Alhamdulillah, we are good, we are prosperous, everything is good here. We're living a, a good life. And he did dua for them. And as he was leaving, he said to his daughter-in-law, she did not know this. He said to her, give your salam, give my salam to your husband and tell him, to protect the frame of his door, to look after the frame of his door. And so when Sayyidina Islam, Ismail Islam came and he felt that he could feel a beautiful smell in the house and he realized that this smell can only come from our blessed father. And he said to his wife, did anybody come here today? And she replied, yes, a beautiful faced and fragrant pious person came. And then she related the whole event. She told him the whole event. And she also said, I washed his blessed head and these are his footsteps. Having heard the event, Sayyidina Ismail Islam said to him that he was my father, Sayyidina Ibrahim Islam. And my door frame means you. And he has ordered me never to leave you. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And again, there are great Madani pearls there, especially for our sisters, that the wife there was showing shukr. She was showing shukr there that she was happy with it, whatever her condition was. Yeah. And Sayyidina Ibrahim Islam, when he heard that, he did dua for her and he also said to his, said a message to his son that basically protect, look after the frame of your door. And who is the frame of your door? Your wife. Look after her, protect her. And again, there's a message there for us, Vizu Mnuchamu, that one, we need to show shukr in the court of Allah. And our sisters as well, you know, they can make, you know, again, I don't like saying things like this, but our sisters, they can make or break a family. They can make or break a husband. They can make him happy or make him sad. They can put so much pressure on him. And we've heard in previous episodes where we are told that there will be certain individuals, they'll be destroyed. They'll be destroyed because of their families. And how will they be destroyed because of the families? Because the families will make them, you know, they'll put pressure on them that I want this, I want that, I want a seven-seater car, I want a semi-detached house, I want a diamond ring, I want a platinum ring, I want a gold set, I want this, I want that. And so this pressure, what happens is, is because the, the husband cannot fulfill this, he then goes to places of disgrace to earn that money so that he can please his family. And ultimately, that person is disgraced. So again, in, there's a message there for us, viewers of Mother Channel, that we need to do shukr. That whatever Allah has put us in, we need to be pleased with that. And for our sisters, that whatever is your lot, 
Whatever your condition is, whatever your position is, then you should need to be thankful in the court of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And also think to yourself that look, there are people a lot worse off than me. Yeah, I only might live in a small house or one room place. I might not have a garden. I might not have a proper house, but I'm better than a lot of people. Yeah. I might not be able to eat out every day, but at least I'm eating every day. My husband never buys me any gifts. He can't do anything, but at least we're surviving and we are a happy family. Yeah. I can't go on holiday. I can't go here and there, but at least I have my family. What a blessing that is. And if only we realize and, and focus on the blessings that we have. And if you focus on the blessings that Allah Azza wa Jalla has bestowed upon you, whatever the blessings are, and we have countless blessings, we cannot even count the blessings. If we focus on the blessings that we have, inshaAllah Azza wa Jalla will be thankful in the court of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Views of the channel, we are watching Arise and Shine. We're talking about the unique son, Sayyidina Ismail A.S. And today, inshaAllah Azza wa Jalla, we're going to take a small break now. We've got a kalam, inshaAllah Azza wa Jalla, and it's a hamd, inshaAllah Azza wa Jalla. And hopefully, we're going to enjoy it. And join in if you wish it. You're sat at your homes. Join in with this hamd, inshaAllah Azza wa Jalla. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, 
If only we can do the zikr of Allah, inshallah, we can benefit from this as well. Allah, Allah, Allah. Talking about Sayyidina Ismail salam, and he also has countless blessings. And it said that he's mentioned in many places in the Holy Quran, and he was the one that helped him building the blessed Kaaba, alhamdulillah. And he is the founder of Makkah al Sayyidina Sayyidina Ibrahim al -Islam, he left, he left his father, he left his son there in, in Makkah Sharif. And he is also the founder of Abi Zamzam. Sayyidina Ismail al -Islam, his feet rubbed the ground. And as a result of that, the well of Zamzam came hope. And this is a miracle. The miracle of Zamzam is a miracle such that the water of Zamzam will continue from then until the day of judgment. And even now people go there, millions of people go on the Hajj and they fill up with the Zamzam, they bring it home and people all around the world are drinking from this well of Zamzam. And there are two miracles we use in the channel that will continue into the day of judgment. Number one is the miracle of Zamzam. And the second is the religion of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I, the Holy Quran, the blessed the Hadith, and the laws and acts of worship. If only we realize this. And this Zamzam water view of the channel is such a blessing for us. If only we realize the Zamzam water is such that if you only have Zamzam water, if you only drink Zamzam water, you do not need any other food. All the nutrients that you need, everything that you need for your body to survive is found in the Zamzam water. And you know, many, many people, scientists have sat down and they looked to the water and looked to the pH levels and they looked to the nitrates that are in there, the sulfates that are in there, the minerals that are there and the benefits are there for us. And without doubt, viewers of Manchand, there are great benefits in, you know, drinking this Zamzam water. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that Zamzam water is sufficient for whatever purpose of the world and the hereafter it is drunk. And people have said that, viewers of Manchand, that when you drink Zamzam water, Whatever your intention is, inshaAllah Azawajal, your intention will be fulfilled. So if your intention is that I'm drinking this Zamza water because I'm thirsty and I want to quench my thirst, then inshaAllah Azawajal, your thirst will be quenched. But Ya Allah, I'm drinking this water because I want this water to be a cure for my illnesses. Inshaallah Azawajal, your illnesses will be cured. Ya Allah, I want to drink this water because I believe that this water will inshaAllah Azawajal be a cure for my sins that I have committed. Insha'Allah Azawajal, if your intention is pure, then Allah will reward you as such. So whenever you have the opportunity to drink Zamzam water, don't just pick it up and drink it. Make good intentions. The Yalla, I pray that this water enables me to protect my Iman. It is a cure for all the illnesses, the physical illnesses that I have. Ya Allah is a cure for all the spiritual businesses that I have. Ya Allah Azawajal, it is a cure for all the diseases of the heart I have. Ya Allah Azawajal, make it a means for salvation for me on the day of judgment and drink it. And inshaAllah Azawajal, if we have the sincere intentions, then inshaAllah Azawajal will be rewarded from it. In another hadith, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, drinking Zamzam water to one's fill gets rid of hypocrisy. If we drink Zamzam water, then it'll get rid of hypocrisy. You know, as I was reading that, I was thinking to myself, that even in the blessed city of Makkah, in the blessed city of Medina, you see people there, <laughs> Drinking fizzy drinks, drinking juices. And you're thinking to yourself, how unfortunate these people are. That Allah Azawajal has blessed you with an opportunity to drink Zamzam in abundance. Morning, noon, and night, all day long, you can drink Zamzam nonstop. And you're getting fizzy drinks. You're getting juices. And you're not drinking the blessed water of Zamzam. Allah Akbar. Those fortunate people that, you know, are there. <laughs> you know, this is the. The sign of, you know, the, it's, it's like one of those unfortunate people that the blessing's there, but you can't get there. In the same way that we say to you, you know, that 
you know that we say that you can take a horse to water but you cannot make him drink it you've been take you've been talked to the city of Medina you blessed with the city of Medina and yet you're still not drinking the zams of water how unfortunate is this views of this channel unfortunate are those people that get the blessings of this zams and water and you know this is another it's a sign of Allah Azzawajal. the zams of water is a sign of Allah Azzawajal. that Sayyidina Ismail Islam his feet touched that ground and as a result of that ground the zams and water came out so that ground becomes blessed where his feet touched and the water comes up this mother the mother of him she was running from the hills of Safa and Marwa she was there looking searching for water for her child that was thirsty and to this day them hills become a, a place of mercy for us that we go and visit them places and we go between them places you know when when anything basically that the feet, the feet of the blessed people of the past touched becomes blessed for us. Sayyidina Ismail Islam, the ground that he touched with the Zamzam came, that has become blessed for us. His mother going from the hills back was in forward, Safamara, that has become from us, blessed for us. And all these places, Sayyidina Musa Islam, when he went on the, on the mountain, that place has become blessed for us. All of these places become blessed for us where these prophets and where these pious predecessors have been. And these become a blessed and they become a sign of Allah Azza But one thought comes to my mind as well. That if the place where Sayyidina Ismail al Islam has feet as touched becomes a blessed place. Where if the place where the mother of Sayyidina Ismail al Islam ran between the hills of Safa Marwa in search of water becomes a blessed place because the blessed feet touched the ground. Allah, Allah. What about the places where the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's feet touched? What about the city of Makkah as a whole? What about the city of Medina? Where the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's feet blessed that city, walked around the streets of that city? What about the resting place in the city of Medina? Where the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is resting? What a, you know, if these places are blessed, then what about the places where the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to? What about the places like Badr or Had, where the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood in the battlefield? What about the caves where the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went up to? What about the journey on foot between Makkah and Medina where the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went? What about that journey where the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Taif? What about all these places? I remember recently learning, reading a book where somebody had traced the footsteps of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he made a map of everywhere the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had been. Even before he declared Prophet, when he was uh, a businessman and he would travel and selling goods, all the places where the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had been. And he made an intention that he's going to make every, he's going to follow the footsteps of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and go in all of them places. Allah Akbar. Views of the channel, something that again, you know, when you go to, when you're blessed with going to Makkah and blessed with going to Medina, if we can have the right mindset, that we are going on these places. You know, when, you, when you're going around the Kaaba now, even though there are marble tiles, and it's not the same dirt, it's not the same soil that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam may be touched. It's not the same soil that the companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you're going around the Kaaba, think to yourself, you know, there are millions of pious people in this dunya right now. All of the pious scholars, all of the great scholars of our time, all of the willies of Allah that are open and those that are hidden, that have come here, Allah, I'm blessed. I'm blessed that I'm walking in their footsteps. That when you're walking around there, you're looking at the ground and you think to yourself that, Allah, I'm blessed that I'm walking in these same places where these great people have been. That I'm walking in these footsteps. How fortunate I am. You know, Allah, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. And Allah, you bless me that I'm walking in these footsteps. When you go into Safa Marwa, when you go into Maqam Ibrahim and you think to yourself, how many pious people's heads have touched this ground here? And did sajda here? And now I am blessed. Allah is blessing me with an opportunity to put my head on the same portion of ground where such pious people have been. When you're going through Safa Marwa, when you're going to Mina, when you go to Muzdalfa, when you go to Arafat, when you're going on this journey, think to yourself, all the pious people that have made the same journey. And if you are blessed to go on the Umrah or on the Hajj, think to yourself that even right now, right now, I don't know who they are. I don't know who these people are. But the pious people have been here. 
And we saw early on, we saw the visuals of Amir al when he was performing the Hajj. If we have this mindset that these footsteps, these streets, these places, Amir al was here. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Amir al blessed us with this. And you know, I've said this before, of you, Chalam. You know, the status, the status of Amir al we, we don't, again, we will not appreciate the status of Amir al In a hundred years time, in 200 years time, in 300 years time, when people write about the history of Islam, and they write about this time in Islam, when they write about the 20th century, and they write about the 21st century, they will write about the great personality of Amir al -Sunnat. And they will talk about those fortunate people, views them on the channel, that were blessed to be able to go and perform the Hajj with him. They will talk about those famous person, those fortunate personalities, views them on the channel, that were able to go and sit with Amir al that were able to sit in his court and listen to him directly. You know, nowadays we hear about Jose Park, we hear about, we read the stories of Jose Park, of how he used to teach people and how many, many people used to come. We talk about all about these things, but in the future views of Manchana, people will talk about those people and people will wish that they could be those people that had the fortunate ability to be able to sit in the court of Amir al-Sunnat, to listen to Amir al-Sunnat. Allahu Akbar. Views of Manchana, we have this opportunity. We have this opportunity to be in the history books effectively. To be in the history books effectively, where we can sit and listen to the blessed words of a minister and learn from him. Without doubt, a value of his time views the Mali channel. And if we do not take benefit from him, then one day we will regret it views the Mali channel. Time is passing. Time is passing. And everybody has to taste death. Amir Sunnat is with us at the moment. We have this great opportunity to take the great blessings from him. And I would strongly advise everybody that if you can, if you can, then at least once go and sit in Fazana Medina when Amir al is there. When the Madri Muzakra is taking place on a Saturday night, sit there in that. Even if you cannot see him clearly, be amongst those people, be in the atmosphere. And if you cannot do that, then at least sit in your homes. Sit in your homes and watch Amir al take the blessings from him. Because a time will come for you, Chal. Every soul has to taste death. A time will come and that time will come when we will regret it. That if only I had spent more time, if only I would spent more time in his company, if only I would learned more from him, if only I would listened at that time and learned. I had an opportunity to be amongst those pious people that sat with him. I had an opportunity amongst those pious people to travel with him. Allah Akbar. And I pray, Ya Allah, I pray that the doors of Hajj are opened. And I pray, Ya Allah, Azawajal, that Amir al is given health, that he can perform the Hajj again. And I pray, Ya Allah, that I am blessed amongst those people. And you are all blessed amongst those people that can perform the Hajj with Amir al-Sunnat. And you know the visuals, maybe the visuals are on the screen right now. And it's something that, you know, we close our eyes and it's only something that we can imagine. Imagine and think about those fortunate people that were there, that made that journey with him, that took the blessings from him. Because without doubt, you know, when you go there, because Hajj is something that you perform only once in your life or a couple of times in your life. Or if not, at least it, even if you go on Hajj every year, it's something that you only perform once a year. But the, you know, your namaz, if, if we're reading our namaz five times a day and we're not got that perfect, then how are we going to do our hajj perfect? And those fortunate people that were able to travel with him, sit with him, even when the rituals of hajj were not being performed, just to be sitting in the company of Amir al listening to him, learning from him, even just sitting there and eating with him, being blessed with seri with him, being blessed with iftari with him, even being blessed that you're reading the namaz with him, reading the namaz behind him, doing amin to his duas, Allahu Akbar. How fortunate those people are, viewers of Mani Channel. And like I said, I pray, do pray for me. <laughs> pray for me, viewers of Mani Channel, that I'm blessed with an opportunity to go and perform the Hajj with the Bila Smith. And I pray that all of the followers, all of the people that are actively involved and working day and night, putting their time and hours in, working day and night for the deen, working for Dawud Islami, be you the brothers or the sisters, we are all blessed with an opportunity of going on Hajj with the Bila Smith. And I pray that Allah Azza wa Jalla, that when that day comes, that our Hajj is accepted. But in the meantime, viewers of Mali Channel, we also need to develop this mindset as well that we can take the blessings of Hajj as well. And inshallah, we're going to take a small break now and listen to a package with regards to Hajj. Inshallah, Azawajal, please stay tuned, listen to this package, watch this package, and inshallah, we'll be right back. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do 
respected viewers, there is beautiful account, uh, a heart-touching account to be honest with you, I would like to say this, that Hazrat Sayyidina Malik bin Lina rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he quotes that, that uh, a pious individual says that continuously I was getting the privilege to uh, perform Hajj. Every year I would see a pious person who would hold the door of Kaabatullah Sharif and he would say, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. He would recite this. And when he would say, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, a voice from unseen was heard, La Labbaik, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And he says, for 14 years, that person says, that voice was heard. I asked that individual, that pious person, that are you deaf? Can you not hear? Allahu Akbar. He said, yes, I'm hearing everything. I can listen. Then he asked, why do you come again and again? For the last consecutive 14 years, you have been coming to this journey, and you say, Labbaik, Allahumma, Labbaik, and answer is, La Labbaik, yet you are coming back. Now listen the answer, that derwish. Listen the answer of that pious individual. He said, Oh Shaykh, I take a note, instead of 14 years, if I live for 14,000 years, and instead of once in a year, I hear the same thing every year, thousand times, La Labbaik, yet I will not leave coming in the court of Allah Ta'ala. Ali says, he had just said this, and we were just busy in talking. We said that a piece of paper came on the ground and it was written on it. Oh Malik bin Dinar, do you separate my bondmen from me? And you say that I have not accepted many of his hajj? No, it's not like that. During this time, all the people who have come and performed hajj, I have accepted their hajj through the blessing of this person's hajj. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Dear respected viewers of Radami Channel, look at the faith of that individual. Allah Akbar. And look at his steadfastness, his firmness to stay and keep on asking from the court of that kind, Rabb Azza wa Jal. And look at the reward he got from the court of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Amazing. Ya Rabbana, nirhamlana. Ya Rabbana, nirhamlana. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Viewers of the channel, you're watching Arise and Shine. And during that little clip there, we saw some visuals of Amelia Sunnah performing the Hajj. And I have so much to say, but then when I see the visuals, you know, your mind goes elsewhere and you start thinking about the Hajj and the journey there and how those fortunate people are. But I need to talk a little bit about the topic as well today. We're talking about Sayyidina Ismail and his great attributes as well. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions his attributes in the Holy Quran in various places. And in one particular place, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Surah Maryam, Ayat 54 and 55, and remember Ismail in the book, he was indeed true to his promise and he was a noble messenger, a prophet. He used to command his people to offer prayer and give charity and he was liked by his Lord, Allah Azza wa Jal. Fears of the channel, from this particular ayat of the Quran, we learn four great attributes of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam. Number one, he was true to his promise. He was true to his promise. Number two, he was the one who would give news of the ghaib. Number three, he was the one who would enjoin his family members to offer salah and give zakat. And number four, he was the favorite bondsman of Allah Azza wa And we learn from this view of giving a promise, keeping a promise, making sure that we don't break a promise as well, was one of the great attributes of him. And Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, in Surah al maidah ayat number one, O people who believe, fulfill your words. Fulfill your words. In another ayat of the Quran, Allah Azza wa says, Surah Banin Israel, ayat 34, indeed the promise will be asked about. So again, it's something that we, an attribute that is an attribute of the prophets, but it's an attribute that we also need to have views of Muhammad. 
that we don't break our promises, we fulfill our promises. The Prophet of Allah has said that the Muslim who breaks an agreement and a promise incurs the curse of Allah Azzawajal. The angels and all humans and neither any of his fard obligatory or nafal act will be accepted. If we break our promises, then we are told here our fard and our nafal will not be accepted by Allah Azzawajal and we will incur the curse of Allah Azzawajal. So again, you know when we hear the stories of these people, we hold the stories of our pious predecessors, we hear the stories of the companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi when we hear the stories of the Prophets, when we hear the stories of the Prophet of Allah Azzawajal, then again learn from it. And here we learn that never break a promise. Fulfill your promises, make sure that you don't break your promises. We're going to quickly now go to another kalam. I was told that we've got a beautiful kalam. So I decided that I didn't really want to talk a lot. And I said, let's go straight to the kalam because I want to listen to this kalam myself. But they said, no, 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 carry on with the topic a little bit longer. And then we can let you listen to the kalam. So I want to listen to this particular kalam. And I hope you will enjoy it as much as I will do. So let's go to another kalam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I could have... <coughs> I wanted to do that kalam to go on a little bit longer. But I think because we're coming to the end of the program, we've sh cut it short there. And uh, just makes you think about those fortunate people that are there now. And also, whilst I was listening to that, I was thinking to myself about those people that this year they made the intention of going on the Hajj. They'd booked the tickets. They'd booked the holidays. They'd taken time off. They'd made all the arrangements. But then it was not to be. It was not to be. And whatever is in the will of Allah, Azawajal, that will happen. But those people that did make that intention, then inshallah, Azawajal, they'll be rewarded for it. But I think we should all make the intention views on the channel. And it's something that I've said before, and I'm going to say it again, that please, if you are financially, if it has ever become further upon you, if that you've ever been financially capable of performing the Hajj, then make an intention right now. Don't delay. Make an intention right now. Even though you say, oh, well, Hajj, we can't perform the Hajj this year. Next year is 12 months. No, make the intention now. Make the intention now that, Ya Allah, next year, inshallah, I'm going to perform the Hajj. Next year, inshallah, I'm going to go on the Hajj. Next year, inshallah, I'm going to be amongst those fortunate people that are wandering the streets of Makkah. Allahu Akbar. Amongst those fortunate people that are walking towards Mina, resting in Mina, throwing the stones at Shaitan, going to Arafat, spending the night in Muzdalfa, coming back to Mina, Tawaf, say, Inshallah, Azawajal, Ya Allah, make me amongst those blessed people that I can perform that journey again. <sighs> Viewers of Mother Channel, you've been watching Rise and Shine, and Inshallah, we're coming towards the end of the program. Keep watching Madri Channel. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine.